Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. I like Baylor. I like Baylor. I'm tired of getting yelled at by freaking Twitter. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> like, dude my, my last week of Twitter has been brutal. <laughs> Absolutely you brutal. Who are you uh, telling, T.O.? Who are you dude, telling? <laughs> yeah. My wife, dude, I, I caught, what was it, 1.2 million people saw that Big 12 tweet, which, hey. Look, I didn't say anything but give facts. That's all I did was just give facts. There wasn't a whole lot of opinion. And here's the thing: I I, I think you stand with me, dude. I love the Big Twelve. Mm -hmm. I love, dude. It's a great. It's a fun league. It's great. The fans are passionate. Like, dude, Texas Tech fans have a lot to be happy about right now. They were miserable last year. They have a lot to be happy about. Like, <laughs> dude, they came at me with every fiber of their being, and all I said was, "Hey, Big Twelve is a really good league." I don't think you should necessarily reward the refs. Like nine, ten teams is too many. It's too many in the NCAA tournament. It's too many. Texas Tech. Six or seven. Te Texas Tech fans are the Providence fans of the Big 12. Where if, so like, if, something, if something gets them fired up, right, then all of a sudden you have a swarm in your mentions. And every single one of them has like Reckham. Or Reckham Ralph or Reckham, yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever it ends up being. So they, uh, all right. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Now that we're talking about the Big 12, now that we're talking about the Big 12, I want you to say yes or no NCAA tournament. Okay. Houston. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Houston, yes. Iowa State. Yes. Yes. And one of the reasons I picked on them is because it's so blasphemous what they did. But they, they they're an NCAA tournament team. Uh, Baylor, yeah, of course. Kansas, yes. Texas Tech, Texas Tech and TCU is where it starts getting interesting for me. But I would say exactly that's where I'm beginning it because TCU's played and beaten nobody, and they were 345th current Kim Palm non conference strength schedule. 345th. Okay, so Texas Tech, I, I I like Texas Tech to get in. I like the team. Uh, I think Grant McCaslin's awesome. I, I think he's awesome. Okay, so Texas, uh, let's see, TCU, Texas Tech, that's dicey for you. Oklahoma. Yeah, but. Uh, it's but, okay, another, so another but. Yeah, but. So, okay, so Kansas State. That went over Kansas really helped them. Okay, so Miami beat Kansas State earlier this year. Just throwing it out there. Um, BYU, after all that hype at the beginning of the season, BYU, you're throwing them in there. I think that they will make it, yes. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. So that what's that? Six, seven. Uh, we're at eight now. We're at eight. So I, I think eight is good. I think those teams we just said is good. Cincinnati, no. UCF, no. Texas, NIT team. They look like an NIT team. Their metrics suggest they're an NIT team. Texas is an NIT team. Uh, West Virginia, no. Oklahoma State, no. So my point being is that it's still a great league. The fact that we're even talking about seven, eight teams. Being in the NCAA tournament, great league. I just don't know that you reward some of those middling teams that are right there on the cusp with that non-conference thing. That's all I was saying. Great league. Need to play people. You can't say one thing and then ad adjust it for another league for somebody else, right? Like Dan Gavitt, you come in and you tell ACC coaches, like, you need to play people. It's important that you play people. Big 12 goes back, does the exact opposite and reward them with 10 teams it's not it's crazy still great league seven eight teams is right and like whatever but it it's not it's i don't think it's as powerful as a league relatively speaking to the last three or four years where i think it was epically good i don't think it's that this year because I, you brought new teams in it's going to drag the metrics down some if you play people they didn't play anybody so that's kind of my apprehension with the big 12 eight teams is fine i'm good seven eight teams is fine past that Go dig a hole. You don't deserve more than that because they're going to be a bunch of eight nines that aren't going to get past the first round. It feels like you got a little, you got something off your chest. It feels, yeah, like I did. It felt, I feel much better. I feel much better. But no, but hey, look, and I'm explaining this to Big Twelve fans because I like the Big Twelve. Uh, I think it's a fun league. I, I, but eighty percent was more in agreement than they were in disagreement. So mm -hmm. I don't want to like, hey man, <laughs> you're not revoking my fandom, Texas Tech. I earned that fandom. I earned it. <laughs> I just love that it was uh it was Fran that completely threw you under the bus. Like he just he threw you under the bus. I didn't think he did. And then I didn't think Fran threw me under the bus. He started, he started like because Fran is the big twelve. Like, yeah, you're right. I love Fran. Throwing throwing you under the bus is the wrong way to phrase it. He's 
since he's so synonymous with the Big 12, the way like Fanta is synonymous with the Big East, if Fran's going to say something about the Big 12, then uh, Fran for Chilla, by the way, then yeah. uh, then all of Big 12 nation is going to pay attention to it. And I just, I'd love, I'd love piling on too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, and, and for, and for what it's worth, Fran and I get along fantastically. Like yep. me and Fran, me and Fran, we, like I've known Fran 15 years, damn near, probably a little longer than that. Like big fan of Fran for Like, I, I saw nothing wrong with what he said. I don't care that he threw me on the bus. He's my man. So it's uh, I, 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 don't, I never said it was a bad league. I just said don't reward these middling programs like TCU. That's all I was saying. It's crazy. Okay, I'm 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 with you. I'm with you. Don't yep. yell at the Big Twelve fans. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not yelling at the messenger. Not yelling at the messenger. <laughs> A lot of people will. A lot of people will. All right, real quick. Since we're on the Big Twelve, I, I want to hit you on Kansas because they they had the if if North Carolina had a wild. Uh, well, I guess for them it was seven two seventy two hours. Kansas had a a a roller coaster of a forty eight hour stretch. They beat Houston on Saturday. They shoot a very nice 69% from the floor. They look like the absolute best offensive team in college basketball for 40 minutes against Houston. They did to Houston what nobody is can possibly do to Houston, right? Um, it was really I, I love Bill Self's game plan, not to go on a tangent, but uh with the way that Houston kind of like uh hedges, blitzes, however you want to phrase it, guards ball screens where they kind of trap the ball handle. They uh, Kansas pulled their offense way, 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 way out hit the short roll and just kind of said, KJ Adams, go do your Draymond Green thing. And it worked. He had like, what was it? 10 points, seven assists, something like that. So big news, guys. I am thrilled to announce that we have partnered with Autograph, a company founded by the GOAT himself, Tom Brady. The Autograph fandom app gives you access to the best college hoops content, fan contests, and exclusive rewards like discounted tickets, all for doing the things that diehard fans like you already do following your favorite team in the news and listening to podcasts just like this one. When Tom, and yes, I am calling him Tom, we're on a first name basis these days, co-founded Autograph. He had one mission in mind, change the fan experience for the better. It works like this. You get all of your college hoops content you want in one place. You get articles from your favorite writers, pods from your favorite hosts, contests from your favorite creators, all on the feeds and the sites that you already enjoy. But instead of having to go to all these different places, it all comes to you in one spot, the autograph fandom app. But here's the best part. The more content that you consume, the higher you rank in the app. As you consider the level up in status on the app, you can unlock unique rewards curated exclusively for you. So download the free autograph app in the app store and use the referral code F68, that's F68, or tap in at the link in the description below or in the podcast app of your choosing to start earning points for doing something as normal as listening to this very podcast. It really is that simple. Very impressive there. Then they turn around, they go on the road to Kansas State, rivalry game, and basically revive Kansas State's hopes of uh, being able to, to be an NCAA tournament team. Where do you stand with Kansas? Where do you stand with this group? It feels like the Jayhawks are world beaters at home and uh, basically nothing to write home about uh, when they're on the road. Good thing that good thing the NCAA tournament isn't on the road. Mm -hmm. um, that That's one thing. Uh, the other one is... Those first two road games that they lost in conference to UCF, they want to be called UCF. Don't call them Central Florida. Don't you? Don't you dare call them Central Florida. Don't call, call them, them the UCF. Golden Knights. They're the Knights. UCF. Yeah, Knights. don't not Golden Knights. Not Central Florida. They're not a directional school. It's UCF. So apparently the C is just there. How much Who do the hell they pay the uh, the the lawyers of the PR firm <sighs> to to get that advice? Hopefully, hopefully uh, not enough to. Sue us for saying that it's Central Florida because it is Central Florida. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> uh, no, Central Florida, West Virginia. Uh, it's by the way, is West Virginia a directional school? No, it's a state. I know, but it's West. Well, it's a directional state, so that's. I mean, that it says a lot about West Virginia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a directional state. This is All the right, guy that sorry. lives in South Carolina right now, right? Yeah, yeah. it's South Carolina. Hey, Carolina. <laughs> uh, not wrong, not wrong. Uh, I'm completely off track. Those two losses are brutal uh, away. They they needed to win those games. Outside of that, guys, like Kansas State, Kansas, rivalry game. Thank God Jerome Tang was able to get that. They lost four in a row. 
and not four easy ones, like four pretty difficult ones still, four in a row. They needed to get back on the right track. But look, I'm not worried about Kansas. They're going to be fine in the NCAA tournament. Bill Self's going to game plan as well as anybody. They're going to be in the second weekend. Um, the funny thing is, is like, I I can't get over the fact that Jerome Tang is 11-0 and in overtime. That's ridiculous. That is absurd. That is absurd. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a stat like that. Like, who else is it? So that means that means the teams you're playing are pretty good. Now, now you know what? I take that back. Oral Roberts, North Alabama, 213, 241. Not all good. They're still able to win it, though. So you're in a tight game. There's a lot of emotion, and you're still able to find ways to win. That's impressive. Impressive, impressive. Yeah. We're getting to the point where it doesn't feel like a fluke anymore, right? Like, if you get to five, six, seven in a row, there's probably a little bit of luck involved with that. You don't have your guys fouling out. Uh, you know, your your team makes all the big shots, the other team misses all the big shots. You get to eleven. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. There's people that are Jerome smoking. overtime tang. <laughs> OT tang. Oh, OT tang. There you OT go. OT tang. OT tang. He'll love it. He listens to the show too. So shout out to I Jerome like that. Tang. OT yeah, Tang. That, I'm gonna change his number in my phone right now to OT Tang, which is OT Tang. <laughs> that is a great hey. Call. Look, look, those those losses too. Iowa State on the road, Hilton Magic, so difficult to play at. Uh at Houston, obviously. Oklahoma at home, you wanted to win that. Oklahoma State there. I just don't understand Oklahoma State why they're like this. Why are you like this? I don't know. That was a bad loss. There were more Kansas State fans in that building than there were Oklahoma State fans, which is yeah. unfortunate. It's it's I can't get the vision of the Oklahoma State teams from like the 2000s, right? The Jai Lucas teams, the end of the Eddie Sutton era there. Um, when those crowds. You know what their problem is? Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma City Thunder came in, and now everyone, that's the basketball team that all the people in the area care about. That's that's, I, I, that's kind of what it is. No, I, hey, look, you can still get pretty good players there. I got Justin McBride there, who I loved when he was in high school. He's not playing all that much. Like, you know what the problem is, is, Mike Boynton loves a certain type of dude. He loves a certain type of player. There's these rugged, physical, they're going to play harder than you. The problem is, for, forgot about offense. Well, you got to have guys that can score it. And I, I always feel like Keon Williams is a, a junkyard dog. Like, they've got a bunch of guys like that. The problem is, when your offense is so bad, it's going to affect your defense. Mm-hmm. Because if you're turning the ball over, they're 11th in that league and turning the ball over like, you're going to give up things on the other end. You don't shoot the ball well. They're shooting 30% from three. Yep. And they're dead last in the league in getting offensive rebounds. Yeah. And so you that know means happened, there's a, there's well, a few happened. long rebounds that, that other teams are getting and they're taking off. Yeah. Well, And what happened this year, I think, is that he tried to correct it and tried to find a little bit more offense, a little bit more scoring, a little bit more playmaking, and overcorrect it to the point where uh, they kind of lost a little bit about what made them competitive, right? Instead who'd they of, add? Who'd they add to add some offense? Just out of your curiosity, um, Javon Small, Eric Daly, um, and they had a, there was another shooter. I'm blanking on who it was in the moment as I'm sitting here, but um, yeah, I just I don't know, man. I, I think they're a little bit too reliant on freshmen as well, which is never a uh, a great situation to be in. The yeah. one thing I will say about Kansas, and, and we can be quick on this, but I, I do want your take is that I think depth is a little bit overrated in the world of college basketball. But they basically have five guys. And I do believe a little bit of what we saw against Kansas State on the road was their legs catching up with them. Um, specifically, Johnny Furphy, who is not used to playing the number of minutes that he's playing. And he's been terrific, but he's been really good lately. Yeah. I agree. It's also worth pointing out that um, in their two losses to West Virginia and to Kansas State on the road, part of why they lost is because of missed box outs and offensive rebounds. And the guy that was the cause of those missed box outs and offensive rebounds was Johnny Furphy. So Johnny, that's freshman it- or tired freshman, freshman mistake or tired mistake. Yes. All the above. <laughs> I just think that's, that's what it yeah. is. I agree. I agree. Freshman mistake and a tired freshman is gonna, more likely to make those mistakes. We are in agreement. Yep. So I, I just, I'm a little bit worried about their legs when it comes to tournament time. They got two games in three days, but with the added, the, the longer TV timeouts and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I think it'll be fine for a specific game, but I just wonder if that's something that could kind of wear on them a little bit. Um, I'm still in on them being able to make a run just because it's Bill Self and the pieces that he has. But- 
As you guys know by now, we've partnered with BetMGM this season. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 each and every week of the college basketball season. We have a special offer that will be available starting on Tuesday, January 9th, and running through Monday, February 12th, the morning after Super Bowl 58. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, in honor of the big game, you can use the bonus code FIELD158 and you'll get $158 in free bets on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not you win that first bet. Here's how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app. Sign up using the bonus code FIELD158. Deposit at least $5 and place your first wager on any game. You'll receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure that you use that bonus code FIELD158 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available under one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient when I have to go cover games in New York or Philly, which happens quite a bit. When you cross state borders, you just log into your existing account and fire away. You don't have to create separate accounts in each state. It's easy, it's simple, it's clean. And most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the heart of the college basketball season. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops, odd boosts, and my favorite, a nice juicy parlay boost. So download the BetMGM app and sign up today. Field. 158. Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content.